going to take us through it all if we trust him. And they really trusted him. Daniel trusted, he believed and obeyed. That's how that's where the power comes in. And actually believe in it and, and obey and trust him. Unbelievable power. It's available to each and every believer. The only thing stopping it is unbelief. All right, how's everybody doing tonight? It's really good to see everybody, right? It's nice and cool in there, right? Move to Jesus, right? Amen. Well, three of us to go shout out to our Facebook Live feed. We've got another family out there. The message goes beyond the four walls. The Holy Spirit will be taken over. So please be attentive to that and not to try to cause any distractions that might stop us from getting the message that the Spirit is trying to say to the church tonight. Amen? Amen. Okay. Mary's got an awesome scripture up there, Colossians chapter 3. I'm going to start there. Start in verse 23. If I go behind back now, I'm starting to one. Well, you know, we'll go to 22. 22 is just a reference there. I like what it says there. I'm talking about slaves in verse 22. Well, you can just say you're an employee or anybody that's an authority above you. Obey your earthly masters, verse 22. In everything you do, try to please them all the time, not just when they are watching you. Serve them sincerely. Why? Because of your reverent fear of the Lord. Yeah? See that? Reverent fear. You know, one thing that's lacking in Christianity today is the reverence and fear for God. And the reason for that being is because the Old Testament scriptures are not brought to life inside the church anymore. It's all New Testament, love, 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 love. God is love, but He's also a God of justice. And He does not tolerate sin. Amen? And He's like, oh yeah, He forgives us, but there's consequences, and God still punishes sin. Amen? So I have a healthy fear of God. I don't know about you, but read it through, read it through the daily walk that we read. You see how He treated His people that disobeyed Him, right? Well, it's no different for believers now, either. Now look what it says. Because of your reverent fear, though, what makes us stay in track in obedience to the Lord? Our reverent fear of Him, knowing that, you know what? God can, the good Lord give it, then the good Lord take it away. He can, he can do whatever He wants with us, amen? <laughs> yeah, He can. Now look what it says in verse 23. Work willingly at whatever you do, as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. Remember that the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward in that the master you are serving is Christ. But if you do what is wrong, here it is right here. This is New Testament. You will be paid back for the wrong you have done. For God has no favorites. Can I get any for that? Yeah. Who the Christians not understand about that today? You will get paid back for the wrongs you have done as a believer in this day and age. Amen? So he tells us to live in reverence, fear of that. You know what the people say in the world now, payback is a, I'm not going to use that word. But let me tell you something, they're ignorant, we know. God knows us, and he knows our hearts. And then we get mad at God when he says, why do we, why do we get mad at God when we're punished for our sins? It says in Lamentation, remember? It says instead, examine our hearts and turn back to the Lord, amen? So he can have mercy on us. Thank God for his mercy that begins afresh every day, amen? Okay, I got one for us. Two Timothy. Two Timothy two nineteen. Everybody there? 2 Timothy 19. Everybody got it? 
But God's truth stands firm like a foundation stone with this inscription, The Lord knows those who are His. Okay? He knows who all the His. And He says, All who belong to the Lord must turn away from evil. Like any man for that. It's something we have to do is turn away from evil. Evil's always trying to take over our walk with the Lord. We know that, right? It says it in Genesis. He told Cain, right? Sin seeks to master you and control you, but you must master it. So once you fall into sin, it's on for the rest of your life now to fight against it. Amen? But, look what it says now. In a wealthy home, some utensils are made of gold and silver, some are made of wood and clay. The expensive utensils are used for special occasions, and the cheap ones for everyday use. Look at verse 1, 20, uh, verse 21. If you keep yourself pure, you want to serve the Lord? If you keep yourself pure, you will be a special utensil for honorable use. Your life will be clean, and you will be ready for the Master to use you for every good work. So what's he saying? you got to clean up your life before you decide to serve the Lord. you got to take care of that. you got to clean up what's in there. And then amen for that. If you want to get used from the Lord, for the Lord. Okay? Then it says, 22, run from anything that stimulates youthful lusts. Okay? So, you know what it is. We all have desires, right? But God doesn't tell us to stay there. He tells us to run away from them. Get out of there. Because they, they control us and they're powerful. Can I get any men for that? Amen. To run. Instead, pursue righteous living, living the right way, faithfulness, love, and peace. Enjoy the companionship of those who call on the Lord with pure hearts. Now, there's a tough one in this day and age. People, it's very hard to find people who call on the Lord with pure hearts. Amen. Very difficult in Christianity. Just walking into any church doesn't mean that people have pure hearts in there. I get an amen for that. Amen. amen. Jesus said, you'll know my people by their what? By their fruit, by their actions. Now look what it says. Again, I say, don't get involved with foolish, ignorant arguments that only starts fights. See it? A servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but must be kind to everyone. Be able to teach and be patient with difficult people. Oh boy. Gently instruct those who oppose the truth. Perhaps God will change those people's hearts. So once we know this and that, we can't change anybody's hearts. Amen? Yeah. It says, perhaps God will. Look at it says. This is why it's spiritual warfare. And they will learn the truth. Then they will come to their senses and escape from the devil's trap. For he is, he is, for they have been held captive by him to do whatever he wants. Amen? When people don't want to hear it, it's not for us to get into arguments about that. Can you get any meant for that? No. You see Christians fighting all the time and arguing over things. It's not what God wants us to do. He says, well, to gently instruct people. Amen? Not to stop fights. And you know what it is? It's spiritual warfare. We try to fight spiritual warfare in the flesh. Trying to get our point across. Trying to make our view. Let people understand what we're saying. When it's up to God to do that. Amen? We are what? Be kind. Be gentle. Be patient. With difficult people. Does God put anybody difficult in your life? Say amen. You know. Amen. Right? He tells us to be what? Those, that's the testing site for us. That's the test for us, to what? Be gentle and kind of. They're not going to go away. He uses them to prepare us, amen? That we need people like that. We need resistance so we can grow, amen? And change. Thank you, Jesus. I'm glad for the resistance I get. Just imagine if you were around people who are all so beautiful all the time. How would you be able to even get anybody to do? We want that, though, right? We want everything peaceful. We want... I want to get on the road and everybody be courteous. I want to get in line and everybody just think of everybody else. I want to go to work and la di da and bubby dog. Unfortunately, we don't live in a world like that. Yeah. No, we live in a fallen world. Amen? The people are all up for themselves, right? Yeah. So, that definitely ties into the message tonight about spiritual warfare. This is all spiritual stuff. Okay. Let's get started with our message on spiritual warfare. Okay. Everybody with me so far? Okay. Uh, this is really important stuff. We need to understand it. Okay. The truth about spiritual warfare, okay? We talked about this last week, and we're going to continue with this. And I'm not going to rush through it because it's very, very important. 
We tend to see our problems and struggles in non-spiritual terms. And because of that, we tend to seek non-spiritual solutions. Okay? Everything that occurs in the visible, phys physical world is directly connected to the wrestling match between waves, being waged between the invisible spiritual world. Okay? The Bible says, the effects of the war going on in the unseen world reveal themselves in our strained and damaged relationships. Okay? Emotional instability, mental fatigue, physical exhaustion, and many other areas of life. Many of us feel pinned down by anger, unforgiveness, pride, comparisons, insecurity, discord, fear, torment, addiction, victims of abuse or oppression, or those deceived by greed and worldly ambition. And the list goes on and on and on. And there's an underneath undercurrent, and it's a spiritual undercurrent, amen? Behind all these things that cause us to feel this way, amen? amen? But the overarching primary nemesis behind all these outcomes is the devil himself, amen? He's behind all of that, and he wants us to fight back in the flesh, right? I'm not going to take that, or we revile back, and we're going to get our point across, we get argumentative, and what do we do? We take our testimony for Jesus right out the window. Just like that in a New York second. I gave me for that. Because we're trying to fight this in the in the flesh. But we have to understand what's behind it is spiritual. So we have to see it in a spiritual way. Can I get any man for this? It's very hard to see it that way when you see these people coming at you or things happening. It's very hard to see the spirit behind it. But there is something behind it, and it's the devil. We have to understand that. We got to learn to use the weapons that we need to use. Can I get an amen? And last time we talked, we were in Second Peter verses one, and he gave us everything we needed to live a godly life. We're not going to go back there. We're going to move on. Okay? If you want to get back, he gives it. He, he tells us to supplement our faith with all them things, so we won't fall away, and so we don't forget that we've been cleansed of our sins. See, once we understand that we've been cleansed and forgiven and cleansed of our sins, we no longer have to repeat that. Amen. We have to understand that. Unless we choose to. All right. This goes on and on and on. Sometimes it's hard to truly comprehend, okay, a threat that comes from things that are unseen. Okay? That's what it's hard to, hard to comprehend that. Right? We don't know that. However, God warns us that the threat of spiritual warfare is very real and to arm ourselves with what he has given us. Amen. Okay. What is spiritual warfare? Let's go to... No, I'm not even going to go there. If we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, we already we already know that, right? Ephesians 6, the armor of God. As a matter of fact, my brother Wayne gave me this thing a long time ago. It's the armor of God. Why do I want... Why do I keep this in my... Because I forget that this is what I use, the armor of God, not the armor of John, not the armor of the world, amen? It's, is, it, is it an item? No, it's a symbol. It's a reminder of where the power really comes from, in the words, amen? The spiritual power that's in the words of God, amen? I have to get reminded. How many of us still need to get reminded of that already? We're in there. We know the Bible. This ain't with us all the time. That's why it has to get in here. And I think I, these, little, these little things help. They have like, they're even look with like a little wristband that says strength or what would Jesus do? Anything to get us into that spiritual thinking. Amen? Amen. We need that. Alright, let's go to 2 Corinthians. We're going to start in 2 Corinthians 10. Everybody with me so far? Yes. Alright, man. I love everybody. I do. I love you too, God. And, and I hate to see people, I hate to see believers get deceived. I really do. And the devil is the great deceiver. You know, he, he, he makes us think that acts of religion help us fight this battle, and it doesn't. You can't fight it outwardly. It's nothing to do with religion. It's in our hearts. The battle's in our hearts. Look what it says in verse 3 of 2 Corinthians chapter 10. We are human. But we don't wage war as humans do. 
okay, or in various ways. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of what? Human reasoning. You see it? And to destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. And after you have become fully obedient, we will punish everyone who remains disobedient. So we have to understand we don't fight back the same way. We have, it's, how long does that take for us to get that through our heads? That we always still fight back the same way. We don't want to though. Because but, but it, it's just not in, our, it's not in our mind enough. It's in our mind now because I'm talking about it. But when we're out there, the devil wants to deceive us and make us forget that. I'm guilty of it myself. I'm not standing up here telling you that I'm perfect with this. I need this. I need, I wish I could just plug into this, you know? So it just comes into me, you know? Because the, the devil deceives us. And look, we're, we're weak when it comes to spiritual things. Yeah, right? We're weak when it comes to spiritual warfare. Because we get defeated a lot. How many of us open our mouths when we know we shouldn't? That means we got defeated. Okay, let's go to 1 Peter chapter 5 now. What was the biggest... What, 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 what made the devil... Pride was the worst enemy. Okay, of God. When we get prideful and thinking that we have spiritual, we end up getting defeated. Look what it says in verse 6 of 1 Peter chapter 5. I'm going somewhere. It all starts with humility. Admit it. Humble yourselves under the mighty power of God. Okay? And at the right time, He will lift you up and on. Listen, He said at the right time. Okay, here's the thing we lack, okay? Okay, I'm going to do what God wants me to do. Okay, how long is it going to take to get the result that I'm looking for? And then when we don't get it, what do we do? We go back in our flesh again. This is the way it goes. We're just human. Can I get an amen for that? Amen. We just have a time frame on God. He says, give all your worries and cares to God, for He cares about you. And it tells us in verse 8, stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him, and how and it says, and be strong in your faith. So being strong in the faith is what helps us stand firm against him. Knowing that our faith in Jesus, we have more power, he's already defeated. We have to know these things. Amen? Amen. Understand this. Now look what it says. Remember that your family believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. In His kindness, God called you to share in His internal glory by means of Christ Jesus. So after you have suffered for a little while, oh, you mean you're going to suffer? No, you do. He will restore, support, and strengthen you, and He will place you on a firm foundation. All power to Him forever. Amen. You know, so we have to understand, let's just use this formula. After you suffer for a while, how many of us suffer being Christians? We do, right? We do. We suffer. We suffer. And it says, a little while. He will restore, support, and strengthen you, and he will place you on a firm foundation. So what is what is he trying to say? He's saying, God, everything happens that God does for us is for a reason. And he's doing it to strengthen our faith. Amen? Not to make us lose our faith. And the devil makes us lose our faith when we're going through suffering. We get we get question God. When we doubt that our faith. Why am I questioning God? He has, he's telling me that after I suffer for a little while, he will restore me. Is that a promise? No, it's a fact. He will. And he always does. It's just not in our time frame. Sometimes it might take a week. Sometimes it might take a month. Sometimes it might take a year. Sometimes it may take several years. We don't know the time frame. A day is like, a, a thousand years is like a day to God. He knows what he's doing. Can I get an amen? amen? We do not know what we're doing. That's why we need a Savior. And when you stay humble, is how we get the victory. It's through humility. Can I get an amen for that? Amen. Humility. Saying, I'm, 
can't do this. I can't do this. And when people think that they can, it's called spiritual pride, and they get defeated all the time, that devil has a field day. James chapter 4, let's go. James chapter 4, let's go to verse 7. I give us this formula all the time. It has to, listen, this has to be, this ha it has to go this way for it to work, okay? This is the way it has to be for us to get the power we need to resist the devil. Humble yourself or submit yourselves before God. Resist the devil. So the first thing we have to do is go to God and say, I can't resist the devil. Be humble enough to admit that you're not stronger than him. That you don't have any power over the devil. You have to become humble, drop to your knees, whatever it takes, when that day comes or when it's going on in your mind, you have to go to God and tell him, I have to come to you. He needs to hear it from you. Can I get an amen for this? Amen. Then he gives you the power to resist the devil. And then the devil will flee from you. Now, does he just go away like a... Like, no, he doesn't just go away. We understand that it's going to take some time for him to go away because we've got tempted and desires that are very strong in us. How many of us get cravings that are not good for us? Mm -hmm. Right? We don't. We pray to God all the time, but it's still there. Right? But we have to understand the fact over the emotion, okay? What, what, like I said, what Moses got him out of the promised land, that his emotions overtook his obedience. Okay? And it's the same thing in our spiritual warfare. Okay? The emotion of feeling defeated overtakes our obedience. Can I get an amen? The craving. I gotta do this. I gotta fulfill it. And until I do, I won't be able to not do it. When he says you have to resist that and say no to the flesh. Can I get an amen for our flesh? How strong, listen, how strong, my flesh is really strong. I don't know about you, but I fell into a lot of bad things in my walk here, before the Lord, okay? I followed the devil very faithfully, put it that way. Everything I wanted, I did, okay? And so, and now, that's why God hates sin so much, because once you fall into it, now it's a battle for the rest of your life, to overcome it. If you don't do it, then you won't have a problem with it. Can I get an amen? So now I know that the forces of evil had me. So now I have the power of God to say no to it, but I have to submit to that power because the power that I fell to was very strong in my life because of what I've done. Those demons just don't go away. They're there. We have to learn how to what? Resist them. They're not going away. I have to tell you, there's no such thing as them never coming back into your into you again. Okay, there's no such thing as that. We're delivered, but we're not delivered from our flesh. Okay, our flesh is still very alive and wants to take over. Amen? Amen. But that won't go till we go home to be with Him. So we have to make peace with that. Knowing that the closer I get to God, the harder it is for me to say no in the flesh. Because the flesh is going to get really strong because the devil's going to put us back into that. You have to understand that. How many of us can honestly say, since they become a Christian, that their flesh isn't strong anymore? We really know how strong it is when we try not to fulfill it, right? Just know, you know when you want to open your mouth and how hard it is not to? How hard is it not to keep your mouth shut when you know you need to? Huh? How hard is it? When it's just it's there, right? It's like a volcano. How strong is that to say, no, Jesus got all the same temptations but he said, he said, now, spiritual growth is being able to not to control that. It's called self-control. Because the Bible says in James, if we can control our tongue, we can control everything else in our life. Yes. Amen? Yeah. So we have to understand, that's what we got to get hold of first. What's coming out of our mouth. And what we have to evaluate 
is what's coming out of our mouth, not what's coming out of someone else's. Amen? We have to understand what's in our heart is coming out. God is trying to show us the reality that's really in there. Can I get an amen? amen. You know when we say, I thought I didn't mean that. Oh, yeah, no, you did. You just did, but the anger just couldn't, you couldn't filter it because of your anger. It's in there. So now you have to say, wow, I really am a hater. I really do hate that person. I am a murderer. Yeah. See? When you say that, then God knows that, oh, now I can help you. I am like that. That is me. It's not that, it's me. What comes out of this shows what's in our heart, right? You'll know my people by their fruit, by their actions. Right. You come to church all you want, that doesn't take away that stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like when you get in the car with someone, right? When you get driving. Or your neighbor. Or anybody for that matter, right? If somebody irritates you. I'm a man of God. Right? Yeah, don't, you're, you're not saying you're a man of God at that point when whatever's coming out of your mouth is but of God, right? But you tell people that you're a believer and they're saying, really, you're a believer, huh? What do you can't control anything that you're doing? Now? What kind of believer are you? You're a believer or a deceiver? Mm -hmm. But I go to church all the time. Yeah, what good is it if you don't use it? Amen. When you need it. What good is it when you're out there telling people to go to church when you're not, it does nothing for you? Amen? That's, that's why nobody wants to come to church anymore. Because nobody's actually living the way they say they do. Because they don't think that they have to. The Bible t commands us to live that way, so people will come. Amen. Again, amen for that. People don't strive that enough that the righteousness of Christ is living right for the kingdom of God. Amen. That's what it's all about. That's why we get saved. So we can live right. And show people that we really belong to this. Amen. What's the world see? They can't tell the difference between a believer and an unbeliever. And right now should be the shiniest part for a believer right now, right? The way it is out there, wrong is right, right is wrong. We know the Bible here, and we know it well. But do we use it well is the question. When we have to learn how to fight back in a spiritual sense, and we have to learn how to stop, pray, submit to God, and then resist the devil. Amen? We have to pause. I mean, it's so spontaneous, right? All right. Verse 7 of James 4. Humble yourselves before God. Here's the formula. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. Come close to God, and God will come close to you. You see it? Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts. For your loyalty is divided between God and the world. You see it? He's saying it's divided. You have divided loyalty. And when you're, you can't be loyal to both. It's divided. And if you're, if you're loyal to the world, then you're loyal to who? You're loyal to the devil. When you're loyal to God, you're loyal to the spirit. Amen? So he wants us to come up out of the world. Not be in, We're not going to be able to get out of the world, but not to be involved with the same principles of the world. Amen? He wants us in the world, but not of it. Our principles are biblical. I handle things the way God wants me to handle them, now, not the way you do. Worldly weapons. We don't use worldly weapons anymore. All right, go to Job 22. in my walk with the Lord to listen to what's coming out of my mouth. Okay? To listen to what I'm saying so I can understand what's really in my heart. I can't fix what's in my heart if I don't see what's in there. Amen? I already know what's in other people's hearts because that's what we look at first before our own. Right? Look what it says in verse 21 of Job 22. I love this. Verse 21, submit to God. Here it is again. See it? And you will have peace. Then things will go well for you. Listen to his instructions and store them where? In your heart. Let them become part of you. If you return to the Almighty, you will be restored. So clean up your life. You see it? What needs to get cleaned up? Our life needs to get cleaned up. 
it's infected with worldly principles in the world. And we try to think that we can just get away with them in Christianity, and they just don't work. You get miserable Christians. Miserable Christians. And we should be, this ministry should be the happiest ministry of all, because this is the ministry of truth. It's the truth that sets you free, but that you have to actually use the things, though. We have to use them. I can't, I can't stress it enough that we can't just not do them. We have to put them into practice. Paul said to the believers, put into practice all that you learned and heard from me. Then the God of peace will be with you. Once you get the information and learn it, you have to go and use it. Amen? It's just like going to school and not using your get what you went to school for. You're going to work at McDonald's instead of being an architect. So we get that, right? All right. So our struggle is ultimately against spiritual forces of evil. Okay? There is a spiritual war ongoing for the hearts of men. As the forces of evil want to turn us away from God and separate us from Him. But for those with God, for those of us with God through Jesus, the battle is already won. As Christ overcame death with the resurrection. See, that's another problem. We don't understand that we've already got the victory. The devil makes us live defeated lives. Because we think that we're defeated when the Bible says we got the victory. We must be born again of spirit with faith in Jesus to be saved from the second death of the spirit in John chapter 3. The Bible tells us to be watchful and to guard our hearts against the iniquity of sin. Evil can only enter us when we allow it to live in our hearts. Now get an amen for that. We have to allow it in. Like a vampire who must be let into your house. The first step to engage in this grand spiritual warfare is recognize it and exists and to generally examine your heart. Go to Romans chapter 1. Everybody want me so down there? Listen, I want a victorious ministry. We, we already got the victory. Now we need to meet the, get, we got to get this. We're going to get this. Yeah. And I'm going to hear testimonies that we got this. Because I ain't stopping until we do. Amen. I'm not stopping until we get it. I don't care if you want to hear it or not. You're going to keep hearing it until we get it. That's what the Bible says. Keep telling them. Let them remember that they are victorious Amen. through Christ. They're not defeated through the devil. Remember, you became believers to live a victorious life against just in nature. Not to be defeated. Amen for that. Amen. I'm not giving up. Jesus never gives up on me. And he says, well, you never give up on them. Because that's what 1 Corinthians love is. You never give up. And God never gives up. But we give up on that before he does, right? We give up. Look what it says in Romans 1, 17. How do we get right with God? It tells us real clear. This is so easy. And it's not going to go to the church. The good news tells us, Romans 1.17, how God makes us right in His sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. You see, the power is in what you believe. The power is in your faith. Okay? The power, as the scriptures say, it is through faith that a righteous person has life. What does it mean? It is through faith that a person can live right. That's what life is. Life is all about living right the way God created us to live. Amen? Before our sin crept in, it took over. And who, what is he quoting there? Well, the righteous will live by faith. He's quoting Habakkuk 2, verse 4. Now, another thing. The devil is a liar. Listen now. The devil is a liar. Admittedly, the topic of Satan and spiritual warfare is one that some Christians find challenging and even difficult to consider. Okay? However, one must consider the truth. By choosing to ignore that the devil exists and that his sole aim is to ruin us, we set ourselves up to fall victim to his ploys. Okay? In particular, he uses the, his use of lies that makes us doubt God and his promises over us. In Hosea 4, 6, don't go there, it states, My people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. That's what destroys you. The lack of knowledge, understanding. The devil uses our mental space as his battlefield to war, wage war against us. Okay? One of his favorite tactics is to tell us lies 
and to speak them so convincingly that we hold them for the truth. One of Satan's strategies is to pre prevent, present us with the worst case scenario of our future in order to arouse fear in us. He can take advantage of our vulnerabilities, circumstances, and even use people to make us worry, instill hopelessness, and rob us of joy. However, by far, the worst lie of the devil is his effort to convince us to believe him over God and that our Father is no match for him. In addition to Satan's deception towards Eve and the Garden of Eden, the Bible reveals other instances of the devil telling lies to God's children through people or circumstances. Amen? Now, the power of prayer. Now, how many of us pray? We pray, right? But we have to understand the power of it. See, the prayer has to be heartfelt and believed. Like it or not, all of us are caught up in the spiritual war that's taking place between good and evil. All of us are caught up in this. Can I get any amen for that? Yeah. We're all caught up in this, okay? If you don't engage in the war, you'll still be affected by it, and you'll be much more vulnerable to evil than you would if you decided to fight as God calls you to do. Okay? So be active, not passive. Engage in spiritual warfare with the confidence that God's power working through you is greater than any evil working against you. I get an amen for that. Amen. Your prayers can help prevent bad things from happening to people and usher good things into people's lives. Listen to the Holy Spirit's promptings for guidance about how to best pray for what's most needed. And then pray to, adv pray to advance God's kingdom on earth and stop the spread of evil. Amen? amen. That's what the prayer is. To advance His kingdom. And it all starts with who? Me. It all starts with you. That's where it starts. It doesn't start with others. It starts with us. To advance His kingdom. Amen? Amen. Know your commander and stand on His side. Okay? Who's your commander? Jesus is your commander. Your commander in spiritual warfare is Jesus Christ, okay? Who leads two armies. The army of holy angels in heaven and the army of prayer warriors on earth. Jesus chose you, saves you, gives you an eternal inheritance of blessings and lives in your soul as a Holy Spirit and lives in your soul as the Holy Spirit. Jesus wants you to choose His side in the spiritual war and to remember that the power He gives you is more powerful than evil. Amen. Amen. I have resurrection power. Listen, how many believers just can't grasp that power? Do you realize how much power you have over the devil? It's amazing if you know the Bible. Listen, Jesus wants you to choose His side in the spiritual war and to remember that the power He gives you is more powerful than evil. Your commander Jesus is the greatest example of a prayer warrior. By studying his life on earth, you can learn how to serve God without fear. Does anybody really study Jesus' life? To see how he did and handled life? It's important to understand it. If you would want to know how God would want you to live down here, who would we look to for the example? Jesus. Jesus, right? Jesus. The next one, recognize who your true enemy is. Your enemy is Satan, the highest rank of the falling angels who rebelled against God. Satan is your adversary, accuser, tempter, and deceiver. He works by trying to convince you to doubt God's truth and believe his lies instead. How many of us doubt God? Come on now. Here we go. When things ain't going the way we want, we doubt God. That's true. We all do. You open, listen, let me just say something here. I mean, you open doors for your enemy to attack you whenever you deliberately disobey God and choose to sin. You know that, right? Let me just stress that a little bit to you. You open doors for your enemy to attack you whenever you deliberately disobey God and choose to sin. Can I get an amen for that? Amen. You open the door for the enemy when you choose to serve sin. That opens the door for who to come into your life? Satan. So don't think that your sins aren't doing that. They are. 
When you choose to sin in this world, you allow the devil back into your life, and it's going to make a mess of you again. Yes. It's a choice you have to make. Just remember, the next time you choose to do something against God, that you open the door for Satan's power. Now get amen. amen. It's very important to understand that so you think twice about doing it. It's vital to run away from temptations to sin and pray against Satan's plans to hurt you and other people. Am I getting through here? Yes. Be certain of your authority in prayer. This is another one. You have to be certain of your authority in prayer. Jesus has given you the authority to pray in his name and to know that he will answer your prayers according to God's will. And at the right time, be confident that you can pray to usher God's power into any situation. Are we getting this? God's power is in each and every one of us. Now, choose to sin, choose to suffer. Don't blame God for Him not working in your life when you're choosing sin over Him. Okay? So don't think, because you come to church and read your Bible and do the daily walk, that that's protecting you from you choosing to sin. Okay? Because that does that doesn't protect you from that. The only thing that protects you from choosing to sin is you saying no to it. Amen. Amen. That's why Jesus died. So you can say no when you want to do that thing that's against God. Amen. And through His grace and mercy, He'll offer forgiveness to you. Amen. Now, does that mean you're not going to heaven? No, but let me tell you something. When you do it down here, you cause problems. Don't think sin doesn't cause problems anymore in the believer's life. It causes too many. And we give the devil too much power by doing it. I'm all about you. But I know every time I say yes to sin, I'm saying yes to Satan. Yeah. And when I say no to sin, I'm saying yes to God. I'm not gaining power. Get it? Yeah. So he said to put to death, remember in Colossians, like Colossians? Put to death all the sinful things lurking within you. So all the sin is lurking within me. It's in my blood. It's in my DNA. So I have to what? Put it to death. Jesus put it to death at the cross. He says, now you're going to put it to death. Thank you, Jesus. All right, we're going to stop there. Thank you for letting me share that with you. We'll continue in this warfare. We're going to get this. We're going to be victorious.